Hello and welcome back to a new season of Knights HQ podcast. Is it a new season, Croaks? Oh, technically. I reckon we're, we're in now. We're like, what, what episode is nine. this? Eight? This is episode nine? nine. So welcome to season three of Knights HQ podcast brought to you by Maxwell Recruitment and Training. Highly skilled labour hire and real world training from engineering trades and construction to office administration. Well, you've already heard Croaks' <laughs> voice. Here he is. How are you, mates? I'm going good, Jay. How are you? Yeah, good, good. I reckon we need to uh, look. Technically, it is a new season, but I reckon we're we're nine episodes in there. Yeah, we're basically yeah we're basically past the ball game, aren't we? So <laughs> yeah. now, last week I was an absentee. Sorry, how are you? Yeah, good. You going well? Yeah, real good. That's good, mate. Real good, good man. You. We're footy's back and we're in it. Yep, we're it's going beautiful, um, mate. You, Bedsy. Yep. One on one, how'd yeah. you go? No, it's good. We were just talking about it before. I'm not too great with the uh, the sponsorship reads and all that, <laughs> and taking breaks. I'm more just better at um, <laughs> just being in the middle and talking yeah. and uh, asking questions and stuff like that. But it was a, it was a bit of an honour to have old Bedsy on um, as our, our Knights HQ Legends uh, segment. So it went well. Uh, we had a bit of fun talking about a couple of his past games and um, stories of. Uh, some of his past players and stuff like that and he's just a good man to catch up with and he's a good custodian of this club and uh yeah he's a good lad i know about you but i feel like i get desensitized to the people that we work with yeah day to day yeah 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 yeah, like every once in a while i kind of go like this is bedsy yeah you come accustomed to it you know what i mean or like when joey's at training you kind of just get accustomed in being around and then you're like yeah, or you see Chief. Andrew Johns is in the building. You see what? Chief walking in. Yeah, you just exactly. go, oh, It's just Chief, <laughs> like, but yeah. it's it's really not, is it? It's so. hectic, man. Hectic. Um, look, today, look, let's should we say our biggest guest so far? Oh, I'd say so. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. it's my man, Bradman Best. <laughs> hey, Ray, how are you? Thanks, boys. Yeah, Thanks I'm for good. coming on. No, I appreciate it. We've done one of these before, man. You. We have. We did yeah. one on the two five seven, and we did about a real good hour's worth. And uh, <laughs> until I realised I didn't put the SIM card in the recorder <laughs> And we just went, oh, screw it, we're not doing it then <laughs> Actually, and while we're on that I might be able to say thanks to Braddy for that Because I think because of that Oh yeah, we probably I got the call up yeah. to come in and start doing it cause Probably, <laughs> probably And because we were too lazy to edit out our <laughs> podcast yeah. But me and the Brick, we used to live together, me and the Brick <laughs> Yeah, did. really? Yeah, we lived together for a year What was that like? It was good It was mad We used to have a good time Braddy, you have, have your chef Skills improved, lad. I <laughs> no, actually have. Uh, have. I swear. I swear. Actually, I think I've heard the mint story. Oh, the chili con uh, car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hated cooking back so, in the day. So Braddy had me all g'd up. He said, um, "He said, oh, I'll, cook, I'll cook a dinner tonight." He goes, "I'll cook some chili con carne." I go, "Whoa, so Braddy, <laughs> what is that, lad? Sounds gross." And he goes. He goes, yeah, you know, he's like, you know, it's just a bit of this, bit of that. And I was going, sweet, hectic. And I was just sitting in the lounge room. He goes, dinner's ready. I walked outside. It was, I swear to God, it was just mince and rice <laughs> with a bit of cheese. cheese. On top, uh, <laughs> had the cheese. But we used to have a good time. It was me, Braddy, and Phoenix. So it was 2020, the year of when COVID, COVID fully hit. And oh, we, okay. we're in the bubble. So we spent a lot of time in each other's pockets, yeah, sitting around watching TV. Brady's one of the best TV show watchers <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Eh? Yeah. Watch Prison Break in about a week. The whole thing, start <laughs> to finish, is unbelievable. It's almost like um, during that time, people either got really close or they never wanted oh, to talk yeah. to each other ever again. No, nah, so we were boys. Yeah. We were boys. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. we loved it. We it had a mad, mad time there. It was, it was a good fun. Well, look, first segment today, we're mixing it up a little bit. Um, we're going to do a Would You Rather, Brady. So we so usually do a player quiz. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. But we're, we're going to flip it up. I think we've, we've done rather. a player quiz with Brady before, right, Jimmy? Yeah, yeah. yeah 100%. Yeah, so we've all, we've, we know all that. Let's get into some Let's of this. So, up, hill runs at King Edward Park or the Bronco? Uh, I'll take the Bronco. The Bronco? Yeah. Hill runs no good? Oh, they're tough, but yeah. um, I've sort of improved on my Bronco, so okay. I'll take that. So yeah. for, for those who don't know what a Bronco is, it's a... You know, start on the try line, you go 20 and back, 40 and back, 60 and back, and then you repeat that five times. So it ends up being 1.2 kilometres. So yeah. tough. Yeah, and that's, yeah, oh, yeah that's, you, that's a hard test. That's so hard. Yeah, one Brady's, point, Brady's that, got the best in the club. Yeah, so you guys were doing that uh, like every day during the preseason, hey? And uh, don't they time you? Yeah, so you get yelling timed, out numbers yeah. as yeah, you get yeah, in yeah, the yeah. Yeah. final line, timed, right? Yeah, you do it. You do it a lot if you don't get your your time. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. So, so when you're doing it with the team, though, because I know there's times where everyone does it at the same time. Yep. Is it a certain time that everyone has to finish by, or else you've all got to do it again? Is that kind of how it, they work it? Each positional, like each positional group, has different targets and times. Yeah. So, yeah. 
for forwards like Croaks. He's as different in my time as an yep. outside back. So yeah, not far off you, but <laughs> <laughs> I am actually. I'm a long way off him. <laughs> but Mate, yeah, Braddy's got the best in the club. Yeah, yeah. Well, man, look, we'll get into it later. But you know, preseason was Braddy's time to shine this year. Man, he killed it. Uh, day or night game? Uh or rather day. I'm day game. I think yeah. that's the general consensus, right? Yeah, I'm a, I'm an Arvo game as well. Yeah. well I'm just wait, playing. Wait along, I'm just playing along for fun, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've heard because um, we had a um, a night game in New Zealand, like that waiting around in the Arvo for it to start gets a bit monotonous, yeah. right? Correct. I hate yeah. waiting around. Yeah, yeah. just drags well, out. The and day. when when you play the eight a m uh, eight pmers, mm. mate, the day feels so long. Like yeah. you don't have to get to the stadium till about six o'clock, yeah. so it is a long, long wait, and you're just sort of sitting around burning energy. Yeah, yeah. Fine. It's like a waste of a day almost. But yeah. the Arvo footy, I reckon, is always better. Correct. So we reckon what. Uh, the five thirty on Saturday or three o'clock on Saturday or the four o'clock Sunday. They're the yeah yeah, yeah. they're yeah, the yeah, ones. The Even at the it's moment, the six o'clock. Yeah, the six six, six o'clock Arvo because you finish yeah. in night time, but yeah. you start in the because yeah. yeah. the sun's yeah. still up. But yeah, yeah, yeah cool, um, mate. If you could time travel, would you go to any time in the future or any time in the past? Oh, that's actually tough. Oh. <laughs> um, oh, I'd have to go future. I don't think I'd go. Really? Back. Can you imagine you in the game in the past? The yeah. way you are now? Yeah, see. I'd There'd be, be some run like meters that. on the board, <laughs> I reckon, eh? <laughs> what do you reckon, Croaks? I'm trying to think because... Have you thought about having modern players in the game in the past? Like, obviously... Yes, like I Different. Have. Yeah. Mm. Bit, bit slower, but a lot tougher, you know? Yeah, there's no, yeah, you know... The doctors aren't coming out every yeah, two seconds yeah, or anything yeah, like exactly. that, you know, just play on. So, yeah, have you ever thought about that? I haven't really – well, because when I'd seen this question, I wasn't really thinking about going back and playing footy. Yeah. I was more just thinking so. about being – The things that have happened in yeah, the world, yeah, yeah for and, sure. But if I go back in the past, there's not really a whole – I'd leave it. Yeah, there's yeah. not really a whole heap I can improve. Yeah, like yeah. I heard a comedian once say, like, if he went back – a hundred years from now, he wouldn't improve the world anyway because he would tell them about cell phones, but I don't know how to make a cell phone. Yeah, good point. So you'd yeah. just get to like a point where you'd just tell them things and they'd be like, well, show us how to do it. And you wouldn't know anyway. <laughs> so yeah, um, cool. I think I'd go in the future. Yeah. Well, I've got to be honest. I didn't think about footy either. Yeah. Until I looked at Brabham and went, imagine Brabham. Back then. <laughs> so there was no, uh, I didn't like have that pre-made or anything like that. Um, mate, one, four or any other music <laughs> artist. <laughs> Look, I do love my one four. <laughs> um, also love Fifty Cent too. Oh, yeah. um, number based artists only. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah look, one four wins. Yeah, one four wins over, over everyone. Yeah, right. On. Okay, fair enough. Been a bit of strife at the moment, poor one four. Aren't yeah, they? I know. Bit of drama there. Anyway, that's what happens. That's what happens. Um, oh, well, that, that, that was that all got? Yeah, that four was of them. Okay, there we go. Sweet. If you had to go forward into the future, sorry, how far would you go? Oh, you'd want to make it worthwhile, right? Yeah, you do, but oh, I don't know. I'd go about. I don't know. I'd go about sixty years. I was so if I if I go forward, it, like, does my life still go on? Yeah, so you're the same age as yeah, you right and now, I'd yeah. Oh no, so you see, I was thinking like, imagine if I went forward and I could sort of just hide and see like myself with all my grandkids and yeah. stuff. Yeah, that would be cool. That's yeah, mad. is that yeah, what I you think? Saying? That's what yeah. it is. Yeah, 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 yeah sweet. Is. I'd do that then. Well, look, I'm not basing that on any type of yeah, science. Yeah. It's just every movie I've ever seen. Yeah. That's what happens. Yeah, <laughs> this is all imagination. Anyway, this is all he, he say, she say. Um, look, boys, let's start talking about a little bit of footy. Um, let's get a Brady's reaction to the Dolphins game. Um, obviously, we're back at home. It was awesome to see everyone back there. Um, obviously, we just fell short in the game, but there were there were a lot of things on the field that we can build on and things that we sort of you can take as a positive, man. Yeah, definitely. Um, so good to be back home. Um, there's no better feeling, honestly. Um, the, from the warm up, um, to obviously running out there, um, you know, with the three debutants, Gags one fifty, of Croaks being back, it was massive week, and we spoke about it. Um, meant a lot to us. Um, sucks we fell short But definitely positives to take out of the game And you know this The boys and We're definitely on the up um, You know we never Never lacked effort Never Never lacked faith um, You know I truly believe We thought we could win the whole The whole game But yeah it just sucks we fell short Yeah Look I think the thing is And This is a good thing I feel Is Even though we had those circumstances against us With our you know Injury toll and things like that Our mindset is 
we're going to win the game. Mm. Like it's not, oh, look, this is an excuse before we've even started. We don't have the playing group. That, you know, we don't have the experienced guys out there. We, you're literally disappointed at the end of the game because you're actually, uh, yeah, we're going to win this thing, you know, and we're up, you know, with yeah. you know 20 minutes to go, well, whatever it was. Well, we went after it. Yeah. Like we didn't just sit back and let the game play out. You yeah. know, we tried short kickoffs, short dropouts. We tried, you know, different little run shapes and stuff. And we had like Riv, Ryan River, who was on debut, trying like his hand, like trying to play out of our own end and that. Yeah. So we went after the game and yeah. we tried to win the game. And that's what we wanted to do for the, for the debutants, for the fans watching, um, for the fans at the game, you know, we tried, you know, and that, and I think that's a difference to last year. Yeah, 100. You know, I don't think we didn't let anyone down by our effort. No. Um, and to be brutally honest, we probably did last year a lot of times, and yep. and on the weekend, you know, we really, really did try. Yeah. No. So. 100. percent 100. percent um, Mate, how good was it having Dill out there? Oh, so good. Yeah. Um, I lived with Dill for um, two and a half years, three years, and um. Ever since he moved up, uh, that's all he's wanted to do. I remember we'd be at the back, we'd be bored as we're passing the footy, kicking the footy, we're doing gym just because it's there and we just, you know, wanted to get bigger, better and, um, yeah, I'm so happy for him um, and his family, massive family. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah I think he had half the stadium <laughs> in the stream, right? Yeah. yeah, all the boys too, like all the boys got around him and, um, yeah, I'm so stoked for him and, I love to see when, you know, the debutants show emotion oh. and to see Dill and his old boy when he got presented his jersey um, shed a tear, you know, it, um, it's it's so good to see. I'll come back to that real quick. But um, with Dill, when he was on the field, did you get much to do with him? Because you were – because you're left centre and he was side, right back rower, right, yeah. When I seen him come on and, like, he was doing, like, making his mad tackles and he had his first run, I'm in my head, I'm going, come on, Dill. Go. Yeah, 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 it's so weird because you're so, so far yeah, apart. So far yeah. away, like, I'm going, oh. <laughs> I, got, I got real lucky because we're all sort of, like, you know, Dills is one of us and yeah. that. And um, as I, when I was coming off, Dills was going on. Yeah. It's mad. And, and the rule is you can't, you literally, they have NRL officials, you can't get on the field until the person is off the field. Yeah. So I, like, sort of beeline to run next to him and I sort of got to, like, Give him his last little hug before That's he went on. Oh, good, so yeah. good. That's mad. What I was going to ask was like, you know, we we got to see the three debutants with their family, and even Gags got emotional with his one fiftieth for the club. Do you remember who presented yours? Bedsy. Oh, did he? My yeah, yeah. Debut jersey, Bedsy. Yeah. yeah. Did you cry? Nah, I didn't cry. I was a mess, bro. I remember mine. I was so bad. <laughs> Connor presented mine. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. pretty boys, but yeah, that's so that was yeah. pretty sick. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, uh, you could tell how much it meant to him and his family. Mm. Like, his dad came up to me after the game and, like, gave me a massive hug. He was like, thanks for everything. This, oh, literally, I took two photos. <laughs> our video. Like, I did nothing compared to what everyone else had done. And he's, oh, thanks so much. It's been such a great week, blah, blah, blah. You just tell how much it meant to his family. Yeah, and so much. How much it meant to you. So it was a massive ripple effect to, yeah. like, not only touch his dad, but like his little brother's sister. Yeah. yeah. Like and 2022 preseason, he had a blinder. Yeah. And then he got injured, and then it was yeah. it's such a shame. And then like this year, he's just you know to see him debut was it was awesome. I also had like a moment of clarity. We went to the pub after with Dills's family, and we had a couple of drinks in celebration. And I was speaking to some of his friends that he grew up with that now live here, and I was saying how cool it was, and they were going, they were going like, oh, Crokes, you know, this will never happen for our friendship friend group again. Yeah. Like in terms of like there's a big core group of them, that, like none of them are going to play NRL because yeah. that's not their dream anymore. Like they pass that and Dills is like, like that'll never happen for them again. And like when you think of it like that, it's a pretty cool perspective like Sheppy was telling me. Mm. And so like it's, yeah, it's pretty special when you, when you speak about the ripple effect. Yeah, man. Now, one guy finished his suspension yeah. over here. <laughs> yeah. He pulled the jersey back on. You touched on it a little bit, mate, but how did it feel to be back out there? No, it was so good. Uh, you know, we of, missed you. We love seeing you out there. I sort of got lucky with the first game back from my suspension being a home game on a yeah. Friday Arvo. So <laughs> yeah. I got lucky with that and all the debutantes and um, everything we had to play for. But it was awesome. You know, I, I was so etching to get back out there. I I only had a two-game suspension, but it felt like four or five because of the trials or whatever. Yeah, so yeah. Um, it was pretty long on the back of a preseason, and um, yeah, I was just trying to go out there and not let anyone down. And um, yeah, it was good to have my family there. I you know, have my I have my little niece there, which was really cool. I have my mum and dad, and uh, my whole family. And um, but yeah, just getting to watch like Dills and Tommy and Riv. Yeah. All celebrate with their family. Like no one really speaks about it, but Tommy can out about a hundred. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. down on the alcoholic. Yeah, on, on the, the southern hill. hill. Go, like, uh, yeah, that's go. when you know they're locals, <laughs> yeah. man. They know what hill to be on. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> it was like a funny moment where the ball 
was sort of dropped by the Dolphins. Oh, it was on the scrum and it was like a dead ball, but he just sort of picked it up and he sort of walked <laughs> under the post and you could hear him all going, put it down. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and he just put it and down. It meant there. nothing and they all went nuts. Dude, he took it. He took a scoot out of dummy half as well. Yeah, close to the line. Close, yeah, man. And scored, I was yeah. on the line, like ready to shoot and the whole crowd, yeah. you get, literally felt like the whole hill went, oh, because yeah. it was so close. So yeah. like it was, it was, I just got like real lucky with the game I got to come back with. It was just, um, yeah, it was one of the special games to be a no, part man. of. I, when they said, when I heard on the pair that you were coming on, I was yeah. like, oh, I'm watching Crex's first run yeah. to see where he's at. I lungs like, there lungs he is. were burning. Yeah. <laughs> Great first run. Too. Yeah. Great first run. A few post-contact meters yeah. there. Offload. Offload. Um, now, this Sunday, we're back at home talking yep. about it. It should be awesome again. Afternoon game, 4 o'clock, as we said earlier. Um, you you know, the Ford packs and these these games are always entertaining Creature yep. in the middle, mate. How, yeah. do you, how do you see it? Oh, it's it's a challenge, but challenges are really good on the footy field because um, you know that's what we go out there to do, and we always try and get one up on them. And they've got uh, Josh Papaliti back. Yeah, um, you know some of their forwards have been pretty playing. handy player. Oh yeah, he goes all right. <laughs> um, some of their forwards have been playing out of their skin, like Corey Horsby. You know, scored a double on the weekend and. No, I don't want to talk about them too much, but yeah. it's good fun, mate. We're getting a couple of boys back as well. You know, we got Kurt back. We yep. got Johnsy back. Um, Browse. Yeah, Browse. You know, Frizz is a chance. Yep. Um, yeah, DSAF's named. So it's going to be a special one. And playing at home is always very special. And my man here, I reckon the best game I've ever watched him play of NRL was against the Raiders. Was this? 2020. 2020, okay. I'm going yeah, yeah. to have a stab probably round four, bro. I'm going to say Am two. I close? It was, bro. He scored a double, yeah. It was probably the best game I've ever seen him play in a row. Come back to the house. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're on the drip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, was, right. it, was, it was actually mad. Also, yeah. 2021 Suncorp bubble game against the Raiders. Brady had a blinder as well. I remember correctly. What yeah, was that one? Was a decent game. Yeah. Was that when you were up in? That was when it all coast? went. Remember they locked everything down and we weren't sure. Yeah. When we we'll, and they stopped league for the day yeah, yeah, and then yeah. the next day we oh, played. Oh, that's right. That bro. game. I remember yeah. that. And we had we literally got there, short prep like we were like in a rush. We yeah. Got rushed to play and we end up. Um, yeah, we end up winning. How yeah. strange was that, bro? Tell like tell us how weird was it living up there? Because I was only up there for like a couple of days mm. and then we lost. So weird. Like I remember we were all just. At home, and then, like, obviously the coach and everyone's saying, get on a Zoom call, like, we might have to move locations. You get ready, pack pack your bag, and that was literally all we heard. And then the next day it was, all right, we're going sunny coast. We're located here for the rest of the year. Um, it is what it is. Get on with the job. Do you remember 2020 when we all got sent home? <laughs> yeah. Mate, that was, like, the biggest crisis meeting I've Hell ever weird. been a part of. So we got called into, bal- like, when we were training at Balance. Mm. And they just sort of bring us in and they just go, boys, the comp's done, eh? And we're all just like, it can't, like, it can't be, be done. done yeah. And they're like, look, you're just going to have to go home and just wait for more information. It was so it's weird. So eh? weird. Yeah. Crazy. It's crazy to think back yeah. to then to now. Like, it's not even a thing anymore. And, and now we've all had COVID and we all, like, Everyone luck, just yeah, that now, luckily like, we're healthy. Yeah, and, like, sweet. we just got through it and we we're just like, that really shut the world down for three years. Like, crazy. it's just bizarre. It's just um. Brady, you're closing in on 50 NRL games, mate. He is, my man. <laughs> That's huge. Look, having making your debut back when I was saying 2019, you were a teenager back then. Like, what have you learned? Well, tell, t- talk us through the journey a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, surely there's things you've picked up along the way and, you know, things have changed your mindset or things that you thought you knew now that, you know, completely different or is there something that maybe a vet you wish told you when you were starting that you've learnt now or... Yeah, it's been a crazy journey. Um, yeah, definitely so much learnings um, along the way. Um, yeah, my debut year was crazy, obviously. Uh, I had Nathan Brown, he gave my debut, and then a week later he was gone, he ended up yep. le- leaving. Um, so learned learn pretty early, like, it's cutthroat, like, um, coaches, they come and go. Um, and then, yeah, for myself, just crazy. Obviously, injuries all part of it, but... Um, yeah, just your minds. I think the mindset thing uh, more than anything. Like um, times are tough, and um, if you don't, if, you, if I feel like if I'm thinking about footy too much, or I have a bad game, or something like that, and I just think about it too much, you know, then I get get in this weird way of like just uh, over overthinking, over training. Like I just want to. Be better, but um, I think you really need to have a um, balanced lifestyle as well. Get away from footy when you can. Um, 
obviously hang around a good core bunch of mates like Croaks here and the boys. I've got a good boys here and um, yeah, plenty of learnings along the way and um, yeah, obviously very grateful and appreciative of the older lads too. Like uh, I feel like I gravi- gravitate towards them as well. Um, nothing on the younger boys, but I think that's just how I grew up. Like obviously when I was growing up, I'd hang with older boys and sometimes that can lead you astray. But when you come into this culture here, like a footy culture, um, and you lean on them, I think you learn a heap. Not only about footy, but you know, like the boys buying houses, like saving your money. Um, you know, Connor Watson was big on that with me as well. And um, Adzi Elliott's really good here with helping me, like nutrition, stuff like that. So, and for me, that's massive. Um, just little stuff away from footy, which, um, yeah, really, mean, really you, means a lot. You're saying about like your mindset and that, Braddy, about sort of overcompensating and overworking when things would go wrong. How'd you sort of come to the realization that that was a part that was affecting your footy? Did someone say something or was it just sort of a bit of self-recognition where you're just like, I'm not doing the right, I'm not, this isn't what I need, I don't need to overwork because I've stuffed up, I just need to maybe take a step away. Yeah, it was sort of self-recognition. Um, obviously, last year I was disappointed with the year I had and um, stuff like that and I had uh, a few things off field that just, you know, that's, that was on me and I had a few conversations that needed to happen and... Um, yeah, it was just on me, and I'm glad that I sort of got to I got to kick up the ass in a sense, and it's really what I needed. And um, whether you put that down to me being young or whatever, but I just feel like I was better than that, and I just needed to take a step back and like realize uh, where I am and what I'm doing. No, I felt felt like I'm I'm a leader now as such. Like I'm only young, but I've been in here since 2018, so. I just wanted to play good, consistent footy, so I just needed to take a step back and look myself in the mirror and just go, take it day by day and just nail each day to just sort of be the best I can be. Um, is there anything that's been a thread through your career? Like we've just said things have changed and things you've learnt. Is there something that you did literally the week leading up to your debut that's been the same thing that you've done up until now? Um Chicken Cabanara when we were living together, <laughs> eh? <laughs> night yeah. before, night yeah. before, eh? I do love me passes before, night before a game. That's, uh, yeah, that's actually always stayed. Like, yep. um, away games, I have a spag bowl or go out for a feed, have, yeah, uh, Cabanara. Um, always pack my bag before, night before, just to make sure. Everything's I, good to go. Yeah, I hate yeah. being stressed. Yeah. I don't like being stressed. I like a routine. Um, yeah, massive on routine, so... Um, that's really it. But um, is there like a song? Is there like yeah, the one yeah, song that you play that every time you hear it, it pumps you up? Or yeah, look, we'll get <laughs> <laughs> there is one song that I always just play. Um, so on the bus rides, I just put the phone on shuffle and just cruise, listen to whatever. But when I got when we have um, prep time, when we're prepping. Have an hour of just straight one four and hooligan head, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just straight, just my whole prep, just yeah. Then, then two. <laughs> yeah. So no other rituals, just like just nah, that, just yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. actually uh, got a stat here, gentlemen. Oh yep, Jimmy. Brady's actually the second youngest player ever to debut for the Knights at eighteen years and fifteen days. <sighs> there you go. Number C- one. Can I have a guess? Can I have a guess? Wait, what, what era is it from? I'll have a guess. Because it gets a little bit tricky. You'd know. You'll know, I reckon. I reckon it's Owen Craigie. Correct. Yeah, it would have been, yeah. yeah. Late nineties. He debuted at seventeen years and two months. That's yeah, crazy. see that's yeah. like yeah, it's a bit that awkward like that because you can't you can't debut until you pass eighteen. Correct. Like I'm pretty sure Bob Fulton played for Australia when he was like seventeen. Yeah. So Did you you, you and Craigie play on the same side of the field? Oh, I'm not sure. I think you do. Maybe. How'd you know that? He's told you a couple of times, hasn't he? <laughs> a big OC. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, so. center, I think he was. He was definitely what? center. Yeah. He probably uh, yeah, we'll check that been, out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Seen the big O in here the other day, actually. Yeah, yeah going on. Right. Yeah. Um, look, boys, we're going to take a little break, and then when we're back, we're going to do the three goats with croaks. Sweet, everyone's Sweet. favorite segment. Yeah, this favorite. is Knights HQ. <laughs> Welcome back to Knights HQ podcast, brought to you by Maxwell Recruitment and Training. We're here with Bradman Best, the Brick. Hey, talk about bricks, Brixton, new dog. Yes, I was just about to ask hey, that. Nice. Tell really us good. how's your parent now. It's mad. Yeah, I actually love it. Yeah, parent, new responsibility. Um, well, what did you get? What breed did you get? Uh, English Staffy. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a little cutie, bro. So cute, bro. Little cutie. He's so, so cute. He's got mad little eyes, mad eh, eyes, <laughs> blue eyes. He's yeah. got a little patch. Yeah, his paws are white. It's mad. <laughs> he's sending us videos of him running up the stairs yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Brick's like a new man around him. He's like, come on, Brixton, yeah. come on, buddy, get up there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I do it, but like. 
I was saying to H before because he's obviously got a dog too. I was like, I'm speaking in like this dog language. <laughs> I feel weird. <laughs> but <laughs> actually, I think we can go to a, a flashback of you telling Brails. I think you had you and Brails on here once, and you're saying how my dog's going to take Fred. Take Fred yeah. out and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> it's going to get Fred all right. It's coming. It's coming for all the boys' dogs. And great who, name, Brixton. Who's, who's got the maddest dog, you reckon? I like, I like H's, H's dog. H's dog. Yeah, Archie. Archie's mad. Yeah, yeah. That's, he's he's mad. a boxer. Yeah, yeah boxer. I like bo- um, Gamble's got a really good dog. Yeah, he was showing us photos. Yeah. yeah. Oh, mate. Um, I forget what breed, but it was a... Blue Mastiff or something. Blue Mastiff. Cross something. Cross yeah. something. Yeah. It actually was mad. j Saf's dogs are pretty cool. Yeah, j Saf's dogs are I mad. I still like dogs that shed too much air. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that yeah. drives me nuts. Yeah. Anyway. Well, anyway. Bricks is obviously number one now. Yeah. Uh, yeah the three hard. goats with croaks. Yeah. Now, we can all get in on this because, let's be honest, this is... You're talking about 2020 just sitting around watching movies all the time. <laughs> that's all I do. That's, that's <laughs> not just 2020 for <laughs> yeah. a big fella. That's, Croaks that's, loves his oh, movies. I'm sick for it. I don't sleep well, so I just sit around and watch movies. So we're going to go three Will Ferrell movies, the top three. Yep. My answer is going to be a little bit different. Okay. I've just invited myself in on this, by the no, way. No, no, of course you're in. Um, I'm going to go top three outtake reels that are okay. on YouTube of Will Ferrell okay. because okay. they're as good as some of the movies okay. are. Okay, you want to start with your three then? Um, yeah, right. So I'm going to go outtakes of... Eastbound and Down, oh Ashley Schaefer, filled in my plums. Some of, <laughs> some of those outtakes are so ruthless, mate. I'm not obviously going to quote it, but some of the things that are said are so nuts. And in that show, like he's a minimal character. Yeah, he's, he's in it very. Yeah. But that that outtake reel is so famous, so funny. Um, second one, I'm going to go Step Brothers outtakes. Yeah. Very good. And then the the top one. Even though the movie itself isn't, I feel he's best. The outtakes of Anchorman Two, yeah, I cry when I watch <laughs> oh it, and I know what's coming, and I know what he's going to say. But every time I hear it, man, I am dying with laughter. That's he, so good. He's used that same sort of um, scenario in Anchorman, and he uses it in um, Talligated Nights, yeah. where he's he thinks he's blind in Anchorman, <laughs> so everything he feels is so ridiculously wrong. And then it's um, like in Delegated Nights when he thinks his legs don't work. <laughs> Brady, do you, have you got a top three? I don't if you know. could come up with it on the spot. Or your favourite, just your favourite. Just your favourite. Yeah, my yeah. favourite is Step Brothers. Step Brothers, yeah. yeah. That's my favourite. It has to be in everyone. Will Ferrell, but my favourite is Step Dude, Brothers. watching those guys crack each other up so is funny. so funny. Oh, my God, and, bro. Um, the director of a lot of Will Ferrell movies is a guy called Adam McKay. Yeah. And the way that they do it, and it's genius. So they'll have a scene where they've got to act it out. But he is on like a microphone behind the camera and he feeds them lines to say. Yeah, right. So he's trying to get them to put them off to try and make them laugh as well. Yeah, yeah, So yeah, some yeah. of the stuff you hear them saying that they start cracking up is because he's feeding it to them behind yeah, the camera, yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to get them yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Man, it's so funny. So as you are saying, Eastbound and Down, I... With Danny McBride in my oh, in my so in my number three spot, I got Land of the Lost. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a slept <laughs> Dude, on that Will Ferrell slept movie. On. So how good is it when he puts all the dinosaur urine <laughs> yeah, over yeah. himself? Oh, mate. He's like, I immediately regret that. <laughs> it's burning my yeah, eyes. It's in his eyes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so have you seen that brick? No. So they like <laughs> they, he's like, they like transport to this like ridiculous like random world, mate. It's so funny, yeah. and they like have a war with this dinosaur and stuff. <laughs> oh, mate, it is hilarious. Anyway, oh. he's like. Like, I'm going to try and, like, get away from this dinosaur. So he, they find all this uh, dinosaur urine and he pours it over himself. Yeah. And he's like, oh, God, this sucks. My eyes are burning. And he's like, maybe if I ingest some, it'll, like, cancel out. Yeah. So then he drinks it and he's like, oh, it's even worse. Oh, God. Like, Danny dude, McBride so in that good. film is so funny. At the same time, he's getting attacked by a massive mosquito on his back. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. Uh, yeah um, that is a slept on one, though. Yeah. That is good at, stuff. At number two, I've got the other guys. I, yeah, I, no. I had it above Anchorman. Look, I did. The other guy's outtakes is also <laughs> very, so very good. Funny. Yeah, it's man. so funny. Um, and then at uh, number one, I got Step Brothers. Now, I had a quote here. It's on um, Blades of Glory yeah. when um, they just finished like a dance routine. It wasn't very good. Yeah. And um, Chaz was Will Farrell's character. I can't remember the other bloke's character, but he goes, because they're laughing at us. And Chaz Michael goes, they laughed at Louis Armstrong when he said he was going to the moon. Now he's up there <laughs> laughing at them. <laughs> Louis Armstrong, bro, the singer. Oh, man. That just gets me every time. Oh, anyway. Anyway, there's a bit of fun for you. All right, Brady, we're going to move into some fan questions because we throw it out to the uh, Instagram. Uh, so yep. this one. 
First one is from Taddy Bell 04. Favorite thing to do with your teammates outside of footy? Um, favorite thing with the boys, um, probably just getting down the beach or just. I love being around the boys in general. So if we're doing anything, um, chilling, eating, um, yeah, down the beach, having a coffee, um, just cruising because obviously we're always having a laugh and the boys are just good company. So wherever we get a crew. If you're um, interested in that too, we put out a Level Up episode last week, week before. You and Adzie Elliott down at the beach, Sunrise Club. Yeah. Uh, we got told why he's been called the Rock yeah, Oyster. Yeah, I so never knew that until yeah. I watched that. Yeah. yeah. So, no, good stuff. Big dirty um, salt body. <laughs> yeah, he loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug too for Level Up. Go, go have a look at it. Um, this one's from a guy you may know, Jacob Saifini. Uh, have you progressed onto pencils from the crayons you use in art and craft? <laughs> <laughs> Look, <laughs> I'm smarter than Jason. <laughs> um, I have my pen license. I don't reckon he does. Yeah. <laughs> Just leave it at that. Yep, pen confirmed. All right, this one from a Marco Regado. Yeah, yep. that's, yep. What is one thing that you've implemented in your life to maintain a positive mindset? Yeah, this is a good question. Um, Very good question. Uh, for me, it's um, just yeah, having a balanced lifestyle. Um, obviously, love training, getting in and around the boys, um, bettering myself. But then, yeah, just getting away from it. Um, just doing little things uh, like that sunrise. Really love going to the sunrise. Um, really great way for me to start my mornings. And... Um, yeah, just mixing it up, family time as well. Um, and just, yeah, what, whatever I can have a balanced lifestyle, that makes me have a real good positive mindset. Last one here is from Noah underscore Clayton 08. This is a toughie, man. Hooligan Hefts or 1 4? Look, this is tough, but I've met Hefts. I've, I've met him on a night out. Yeah. yeah, I got a photo with him. I was like fanboy. <laughs> yeah, so um, oh, he's coming here, bro. He's coming oh, no, to the yeah. Friday night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Friday night. night. I don't know what I've heard about it. <laughs> um, yeah, look, love one four two, but um, I'll have to go with Hefs. Oh, okay. you going Hefs over one four? I think I am, bro. We asked before one four over any artist, and you said one four. Yeah, I know, but uh, look, is it because you've met Hefs? Yeah, yeah, that'd be probably because I met Hef, but I like like. One four because they've always stayed true to them, like they're just straight drillers and like that. Hefs is sort of mixing his music up now. Um, he's getting other artists in, which is good. But um, Hefs started out as one four, but then now he's switched it up. He's gone. He's mixing it up. He's getting um, more like vocalists in his music and that. But I do rate one four as well. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro, it's hard. I don't think we Sorry, Noah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's getting emotional. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting deep here, bro. <laughs> Well, Brady, anyway, thanks for so much for coming on, mate. We always enjoy having a chat with you and talking to you. Um, you know, good luck on the weekend, mate. Hope you're out there ripping and tearing. Um, thank you. No, nah, always. Mate. Thanks, Brick. Thanks, no, my boy. Thanks thank for coming you. on, bro. Thanks for having me. Um, guys, you can subscribe and leave a review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we'll be dropping the full video version of this on our channel, and we've got back episodes that you can have a look at. You can like, subscribe, hit the notification bells, and be notified when it drops. There's also plenty happening around Knights HQ, and the best way to stay up to date with that is on our club website and social media channels. You can follow at NRL Knights on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the whole lot. We'd also like to thank Maxwell Recruitment and Training for bringing you this episode of the podcast. My name's Jay Nelson, Matt Croker, Braddy. Thanks once again. We'll see you on the next one. Sweet.